Hi, I'm Paul Kaminsky. I'm chairman and CEO of a small company named Technovation, which does consulting work, uh, assisting companies with business strategy, uh, supporting advanced technology, and applications of that technology to the defense and aerospace business. As I look back over um, experience in a couple or three careers, I have found four factors, what I call the four Ps, that I've uh, found to be critically important to uh, almost anything that's going to be successful. The first of those uh, P's stands for people. Uh, finding best and brightest, equipping those people with the training and tools they need to do their job, presenting them with a significant challenge that they can relate to, and then supporting and giving them the freedom to, adjust, to address that uh, challenge. The second P uh, comes back to your question of government and industry together. The second P stands for partnerships. Finding a common set of objectives uh, that you can pursue in a coordinated and a combined way. Finding partnerships today, especially in our political arena, is a lot more difficult than it used to be. And there are some things that make it a little more difficult for partnerships between government and industry, more cumbersome and, con and complicated complex or contracting rules, for example. But those partnerships are critically important to be able to find and share a common objective. The fourth, the third P stands for processes. You have to have an underlying framework to preserve integrity, uh, to make objective uh, judgments and to do so together and to maintain a discipline for the enterprise. And the last P stands for persistence because nothing here is easy and it requires coming back to again and again to get the, re the result you need. I think things have changed significantly in the acquisition business to make it more complicated and more cumbersome. The processes we have in place always seem to find some new problem that happened in an acquisition and that usually results in the addition of a process or another check or something has to be complied with. Sometimes added with good meaning, with good intent um, from within the Pentagon, within the Department of Defense, as often or maybe even more often added by the Congress to deal with some problem that we've seen in the past. And uh, the difficulty of the results from that is that if you add enough layers to this process, uh, failure won't be an accident. And so we have to continue to work to be able to remove the non-value added layers and we're sometimes remiss in not doing enough to, uh, to address those. That was one of the things I emphasized very strongly during the acquisition reform initiatives that I worked when I was serving in that job. You have to have somebody who wants to take away layers and will continue to do that uh, as new layers are being added to keep some balance in the system. There are, there are a whole number of, of areas in photonics. I would say um, one of the ones of important current interest is looking at advanced focal plane arrays with the digital encoding on the, on the array, so-called ROIC chips, uh, where the interface is greatly uh, uh, simplified by being able to make a digital connection to the array and, and not have to be working with analog cables where there's a sensitivity to electromagnetic interference. Um, and we're looking at these kind of high performance chips today for some of our advanced reconnaissance systems and also for some of our early warning systems uh, like space-based infrared and they're certainly playing a very critical role in missile defense. I think more and more we're seeing our work in defense depend upon the commercial sector and so it's important to us to be able to work with companies who have a viable commercial base and give the department the advantage of the leverage of buying off that base to look for for example uh, lower procurement costs you know, that benefit from economies of scale associated with the commercial business and the ability to share some investment. Um, we're also looking for an environment of partnership to be able to look for some shared or co-investment in activities uh, to be able to advance the state of the art and allow us to benefit from that. I, I think we're becoming more limited in the current funding environment um, with major new starts and bearing all the investments uh, by ourselves 
And I think this is a good time for companies and the department to think about doing some more work together in experimentation. Well, we're not having the funding for major new starts. This is a good time to be able to try some things, including some risky things that may pay off, recognizing that some of them won't work and they'll be discarded, recognizing that some of them will work, and they gave us, give us then a stable of things to be able to draw on when funding and, and new program starts will increase. I think they look for several characteristics. An important one is uh, having the, the appropriate security environment the pre to protect uh, classified things that are key to the mission. Uh, another key one is, uh, it, it is technical leadership. It, it's the people aspect uh, that I was describing earlier and linkages to the technical community to help leverage the company. Might, might it be to a university, uh, might it be to a technical institution, might be to a professional society like SPIE, where a smaller company can reach out and network a little bit more to bring a broader base to the problem and deal with things that perhaps they don't have the tools to, uh, to handle. Uh, another important element is continuous improvement, uh, continuing to look ahead and advance and perhaps a, a, a final one, with a greater emphasis on cost, having someone who has an understanding of what contributes to costs and some ability to track and control them.